My name's Ed Piscor. I'm Jim Rugg. And Jim, today, uh, this is one of those rare things where there are two fully produced comics that are the same story. Uh, in 1995, these McFarlane pages from what was to be G.I. Joe number 61 were unearthed, dusted off, and published as G.I. Joe Special One in 1995. Uh, the famous story is that McFarlane did issue 60. Larry Hama was not impressed, not happy with this young McFarlane kid's work, got him kicked off the book, and Marshall Rogers ended up uh, doing the thing. But with the weird timing issues of old comics, it's such a speedy process, man, that McFarlane drew the whole damn thing uh, before getting tossed off. We'll be able to compare the final printed issue that was drawn, penciled by uh, Marshall Rogers, with the original McFarlane piece, man. You ready to jump into it on a page by page? I'm super excited, but before you flip the page, Ed, yes. I have to point out this is, you know, uh, uh, an homage, a, a recreation, if you will, of yeah. the iconic Spider Man number one comic that McFarlane did and sold millions of copies of. Uh, you know, but not McFarlane. So, like, this is dudes tracing that that pose off to uh, sort of get that McFarlane feel. And shockingly, this is Marvel. Con I'm confused by this. You're doing this because it's Todd McFarlane, super hot superstar artist. Name doesn't appear anywhere on the cover. Put a credit on the cover, man. Aren't you trying to take advantage of this being McFarlane? How do you not put this on the cover? And it's probably why this stupid book didn't sell 8 million copies and why it's hard to find. Look at that. Little spider on the gimmick. I mean, it's not too long after this that comics start putting the uh, creative team's names on the cover. At the very least, you could do that. And one of the things I think we're going to discover, if we can match up, you know, the same pan number of panels and stuff, then we know that Larry Hama doesn't work full Marvel method. Like that, he basically gives you some broad outline on like how many panels are on the thing, man. So. Uh, beginnings and endings, even the lettering treatment is, is changed a little bit, which is fun. Well, I wondered about that. Let's start with that. Before we get into the pages here, we have a different letterer. So that tells me this was not finished art back then. The pencils ah. must have come in and been scrapped and then bring in Marshall Rogers and make the finished pages. So I'm thinking these letters are added. You know, this is all added later to put this G.I. Joe special together mm, after the fact. Makes sense. And it makes me wonder about the inker, Mark Nelson, who would have been a guy I know of in the 90s. I yeah. don't really know in the 80s. I mean, he may have been working then or started then, but I'm guessing that this was inked later on also. So I would bet McFarland turned in pencils, they weren't happy with them, and they went in the somewhere, some, bottom of some file drawer that was unearthed in the 90s later. But that's my guess, that this was finished in, in 95 for this special. So the idea is projector illuminating on a board, and then we're looking at whatever. So... The, the two treatments are fun. The coloring is just abysmal here. Yeah, it's rough. But seeing like the projection lines and how that was treated with... And it's the exact same G.I. Joe's. Interesting that Marshall Rogers couldn't figure out the, a composition to, to show the thing. But you know what? Keep it on there, Ed. Yeah. Uh, do you have a preference on these on, on this layout? Do you feel like the Marshall Rogers layout is is better uh do you see something wrong with the mcfarlane layout i the coloring makes it hard to judge the mcfarlane right. layout unfortunately but yeah yeah i i don't and, and i but i also saw no problems and actually really like gi joe number 60 uh so whatever larry hama didn't like about uh the art I, like i don't see yeah. it um that's not true, because cause, like it's a splash page as soon as you open up, and it's it's a Falcon talking to Law on walkie-talkies, and they're standing 10 feet apart from one another. <laughs> so there is that, <laughs> and I could see if that pissing me off as a writer. Um, and we should note, it may not be because of the splash page that Hammett didn't like this version, or whoever decided this wasn't the version to go with. You know, it could be pa subsequent pages, too. It's, it's G.I. Joe 60, the issue before this... Larry Hama was done, but it's just like, when I, the wheels were in motion. You know what I'm saying, man? Um, Do you remember Carl Potts as the editor-in-chief at Marvel? That had to be like a cup of coffee. Was it like one month that he was editor-in-chief there? I don't remember that at all. Yeah, good call, man. Good call. This is around the time of Marvel's bankruptcy, so this is this, <laughs> this whole issue is just a lot of weird stuff. But Todd exploitation, as you say. 
<laughs> I do think it's easier to read the Marshall Rogers version. Sure. You know, it's a, it's a very clear image of what's happening. And that projector, uh, you know, through the inking or the composition or whatever, it, it's pretty clear to read that as a projector. Yeah, this looks like a window or something. Looks like these guys could be in the same room. Uh, now, this is the old... Conceive, like, this is this. So this is the old McFarlane trick that he would talk about um, whenever he's talking to young kids about about getting into comics. Like, why draw six panels if you could get it across in a splash page? <laughs> so, Man, these are different. Yeah, so obviously there's a conversation being had, but McFarlane wants to draw big, he wants to draw bombastic. Same lettering and everything. It is such a disadvantage, the coloring on the McFarlane piece. I try, like, it really I'm hurts. To look like, through it, makes, it. It, it is. It is a challenge. I'm going to have to acclimate to this to get past it. Yeah, I'm just trying to pretend like I don't even see it. I'm just trying to look at the art. The, the uh, you know, the, the Marshall Rogers stuff does remind me of the Larry Hamlet G.I. Joe. Right. Like, that is what I, you know, it kind of fits in, in my, uh, what I think of as those comics and how they look. Boy, it's interesting to think if McFarlane had had a run on G.I. Joe. Yeah. You know, and started to assert his visual uh, his visual identity there. See, this is like the Jim Shooter mid-shots, mm -hmm. you know? And then McFarlane playing around with with all those different angles. <laughs> that character's very funny. Yeah. Falcon. I, I see the McFarlane stuff looks more dynamic on this page. You know, big example is this nice dramatic horizontal panel to close out the page pointing a gun at a little boy yeah and, and a close-up you know like a like a big enough image that it stands out that's what you see very clearly there's storytelling here like we see fred reaching for the gun then then pulling it out he's got it kind of mm -hmm. hanging out right there for that tangent right there <laughs> guess guys aren't holding hands <laughs> Oh, we get some action. Let's check out some action. All right, knocking the gun out of his hand. Jump kick. We get we get the jump kick in motion. Or no, that's two kicks. Boom, boom. And then the confrontation of our Falcon guy or whatever his name is. I do love comparing these two because it feels like... It feels like a different era. Yeah. Like, it really feels like this is a different time period... Also, interesting McFarlane stuff. Like, you know, that that's so removed from what I think of McFarlane. Sure. But you still see him going for it, like trying to be dynamic and, and interesting composition and stuff. Same with the action scene that we see here. That does look like Nick Fury, though. Yes. Sergeant Fury. <laughs> be like Fury Jr. <laughs> All right, man. Holding the gat on the young boy. I'm going to say this about Marshall Rogers here. So Marshall Rogers has made some amazing looking comics. And a lot of his comics, I think the stuff that he's known for and celebrated for, it is like berserk amount of work on the pages. Yeah. And so this comic does look like, it's hey, funny. guys, we need a new we need a, a new version of this issue Monday. Pronto. Yeah. Um, you know, so it is a very simplified version of Marshall Rogers. You know, I, I don't want this to be too blanket of a Marshall Rogers versus Todd McFarlane comparison because this is not the uh, the Marshall Rogers that we know of and, yeah. and celebrate. And that's not the exercise. Yeah. The exercise is comparing storytelling stuff. I just keep seeing like it's it does feel more dynamic. And I don't know if it's because I grew up on the McFarlane stuff. And so like that made sense to me. Um, but it is so dramatically different. Yeah, yeah, like, you know, so many mid-shots. Very Jim Shooter, very Jim Shooter. I wonder if Jim Shooter's the guy that, I think he was still editor-in-chief yeah, of G.I. Joe. I mean, yeah, I wonder he if he looked at this and was like, that's not the Marvel, we don't, that's not our storytelling. Right, right, yeah, because this precedes Spider-Man works. Hey, man, that's, that's a good background for Sir McFarlane. <laughs> Other than stealing some of those Akira backgrounds, I feel like McFarlane put in the background work. <laughs> this is fun because because you could like kind of try to extrapolate like what was in the Hama script, you know? Like there has to be like a red uh, tra like a trolley uh, trolley 
a green taxi and yeah, then there's different versions of that. They're, yeah, yeah. Like I like that's a, that's sort of the other fun part about this is trying to like imagine like what they saw because like yeah, and then and then we're going inside the hotel, right? Checking in and heading to the rooms. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's it's clear this is the same script. You know, it's it's the exact same action, and this page really is probably the closest we've seen to that that uh, you know on a Venn diagram. There's the most overlap is probably visible here so far. And uh, you know the the Rogers page wins out, man, in terms of just like the storytelling because it's like very clearly we have mm -hmm. Stalker, and here it's like he gets lost in the sauce when you have all characters the same size, like. You can't you can't tell one from another. No, you could maybe if you colored if you use color like as your advantage. Man, like I said, man, I'm just pretending I don't see it. It's so bad. Ooh, but then but then Marshall Rogers wins out because because he figured out how to get just four panels and before I had to use five. <laughs> it's fascinating. <laughs> it's incredible. Yeah, so I guess. No, that's not dial tone. It's some other dude with a beret. And they're talking blueprints and schematics. And look at that shorthand that Rogers employs for, for the blueprints. Probably speaks again to the speed at which uh, the stuff was re required to be. The different character design stands out to me a little bit. You know, this character and this character? Or is and they're not Joes. So yeah. these are just extra Make, make up the character. Yeah. 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 So I feel like, you know, the... The blueprint part is an important part of the story, but it's like so far off to the, it's almost mm -hmm. like there's no focal point. I agree with you, although because it's a big panel, like you know, I'm not confused by what what are they all doing or looking at or pointing at. Right now, Marshall Rogers, he was an architect. He, he went to school for architecture. That was the cool thing about the Batman. Yeah, I was gonna say that is one of the things you see in his work. Let's see, let's see how McFarlane handles this bit. McFarlane doing a little more drawing on these pages. Yeah, characters in perspective. You know, I think that's a mark of a young cartoonist is like you're you're sort of really going for it. You switch up the camera angle, you know, make everybody look cool. Yeah. We, oh, so I see. Uh like he McFarlane just like went directly to this, like didn't ease into it. And then Stalker giving his bit <laughs> they both have a suitcase full of weapons. Yes. <laughs> a la taxi driver. Yeah. yeah. This is great. Yeah. That doesn't age too well, this costume here. No. No, it <laughs> certainly does not. But this top panel, I think, does. To me, that's a much more dramatic shot, especially for at night, and, and sort of setting a tone and switching scenes. Well said. Uh, a different time period. So I think that's a much more dramatic shot. It looks yeah. really cool. Yeah, this is very uh, elementary. But once again, this is this. Yeah, this is where McFarlane is, is, getting his, is putting the drama in. And then even more, there's a, it's just atmosphere. It's like, it's like see, this is selling. Like, like, it's like the abyss... What is that? Where is she? Boom. There she is. And I guess it's Jinx. But Jinx never looked like this. Like, she's always looked like this, but never had, like, the ponytail and stuff. <clears throat> it's fun seeing how the, uh, the dialogue is uh, distributed differently, right? So, like, all of this, um, more than, m more than two-thirds of the page is just half a page on the McFarlane piece. I wonder if this is dialogued differently if uh, if it were written by Hammett at the time. Right. You know, my guess is they just took literally the dialogue from what what they had and put it onto these McFarlane pencils, and it's possible in the Marvel method that he would have written it a little bit differently if he was working off of these pages. Yeah, totally fair. That said, I am glad that I they am retained too. it. I am too. I'm very glad. <laughs> if I had my choice, I would want it this way. Yeah. That's so odd. That's like just some other shit happened in there, man. It is that is where you see McFarlane being McFarlane is, you know, his unique interpretation of the characters. And look at how fast that Rogers had to get that in. Hmm. You know, he would never settle for that in his. I don't. I don't hate that drawing. I like. I like that one too. But you know, to me, this is. This looks like McFarlane. You know, I, I don't think the previous issue uh, that McFarlane drew is as 
stylistically McFarlane-esque as this issue is. We I have, wonder if they beefed that up too. If this were inked in say '95, right? If the they're inkers looking at it and being like, "Okay, make it look like McFarlane," right? <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of questions, man. <laughs> Carl Potts, hit us up. <laughs> you can't have a GI Joe comic without some infighting. Look at how ridiculous like the stock room is. <laughs> That's McFarlane. Like he's like not even worried about drawing some regular looking shit. Yeah, it's a high-tech stock room. Yeah. <laughs> and it, like, looks cool, and it's so easy to draw, you know? like This makes sense to me, too. Like, do we need to see him pull the gun out, you know? Or can we, can we kind of do that here? The big moment is being shot. As long as, you know, it makes sense the guy has the gun or whatever, you can do this in fewer panels, and it still reads clearly, and you get to draw a bigger picture, so maybe it has greater impact or it's more dynamic. Ooh, and this is where Fred takes over, man. I wonder if Marshall Rogers had the McFarlane pages as reference at all. There's not a lot of obvious crossover, but now and then there are panels that remind me of one or the other. Right. You know, the, the dead guy on the floor, which I guess is, you know, easily communicated in a script. But still, every now and then it seems like there's some, some crossover. This, the image guys would do a lot of this, mm -hmm. where there's just like, it's it's like wasted real estate. No, yeah, no it's, real... uh, hey man, that's establishing a scene. <laughs> Clearly, they're, uh, they're in the city at night. <laughs> <laughs> it is the most generic scene shifting stuff that they do. <laughs> and, 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 and K favors, you may complain about not being able to see this so well, but <laughs> that's neither, not a camera problem. <laughs> neither can we. <laughs> oh man. Dude gets hit by the corridor, and then the guys spill out. It's almost like they're sabotaging McFarlane in this one. Like, yeah. yeah. Look how shitty he is. Right. Like yeah. the colorist, make him look bad. It, it is ridiculous that that, that and, and this was not on a schedule. This, this could be done at any time, you know? They could have put that good foot forward. Here we go, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Rogers the the win on the uh, Uzi up the nostril. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, that's pretty great too. I think the really guy good in the stealth. shadows. Yeah, really good stealth, <laughs> and and that was probably like called out. It's like all right, quick kick has to you know stalk a couple of uh, uh, guardsmen or whatever. Of course, the problem being here is uh, you know he's in the foreground and he's the size of that dude's chest and head. So it makes him two feet, four inches. Yeah, yeah. A reminiscent of a wrestler who fought King Kong Bundy in WrestleMania 3, perhaps. Perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be fun to see how this turns out. Or not. Whoa, this is pretty fun. That's great. I don't even un totally understand that. Why? Why? What is that effect that is happening there? Yeah, it doesn't quite make sense. I thought it might have been somebody hanging upside down or getting you know rescued. You know what but... it is? They were running low on time so much. It is the same panel. Yeah. And they that's how they figured out, like, to vary it. Weird. It is I weird. don't hate the effect, but it makes no sense here. Uh-uh. Wow, interesting choice. It's like, it's like all they had to work with, you know. I, yeah, we got to turn so. us in tomorrow, because this freaking McFarland kid <laughs> shit the bed on us. You know, I, again, like this is the mark I think of a young artist. Mm -hmm. uh, you draw everything. I still kind of <laughs> yeah. do that at times. It's you know, it's young. It's it's youthful enthusiasm. It's insecurity. It's not knowing certain tricks, time saving tricks, and things. And so that's what I see here. And it's like a for effort. Like you're getting. You're certainly getting your money's worth. You know, he wasn't cutting corners on any of that drawing. Um, but at the same time, like some of this stuff is more, you know, it's more readable. It may come down to taste. And I think tastes shift by the 90s. Right. Um, you know, but in terms of comics, like we often talk about readability. And I think you can see a greater readability there and probably a premium with Jim Shooter as your editor in chief. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how cool is it to have a document like this? I, I Kayfabers, if you know of any other examples, let us know and we'll definitely like do the spin through because this is this is a pretty fun little class. Yeah, I man. dig it. 
pretty fun little storytelling class we have going on. All right, man. So the guy's got a they got a hostage or a prisoner or whatever. Now they got to hit the awooga button. Now this is split up over like let's see. Yeah, this is split up over a couple of pages. Condensed probably once again to save time. Yeah, those old comics would have that wiggle room where you'd see an extra page, maybe meant no letters column, or vice versa. Uh, so you could maybe have a, a two... It would be funny if there's a two-page letter column at the back of this book. <laughs> right, right. Because this is this. Yeah. Yes, and now, now it's getting dicey like to see where the division is, man, because now this is like, what, all of that? Yeah, it's it's it is funny where the stuff really deviates. It's basically it ends at the same spot. Mm -hmm. You know, the car with the with the Joes or whatever is is splitting. Yeah, they they burst through the door, guns blazing right there in a firefight. Yeah. Now, no, I'll go back a page. That I, I just want to point out one yeah. small one small piece. Yeah, for sure. So the I'm hit. You know, this is the I'm hit here. Just a regular word balloon, nothing particularly dramatic. Here you see the lettering working, you know, the letter was trying in this one. Right. You know, it's a much more dynamic version of that. Um, I don't agree with all the lettering. Like, I, I think this stuff fits that art really well, whereas some of this lettering is kind of kind of iffy here and there. But using the word balloons that way is something I think about, you know, because I letter a lot of my comics myself, and it is something you can do. You know, it's not just make the lettering bold or bigger. You can also, you know, make, make that starburst in your word balloon and... That part, I, I I would give the tip of my hat to that one. You get you get shot. That's a dramatic moment. You're gonna you're gonna let that out. <laughs> now, man, when you're running into a time crunch, now you got to draw car chase and vehicles and stuff. <laughs> Good fucking luck. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna call this one a tie and nobody wins. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> I love it though. I do love seeing a car chase in comics because they are hard to draw. Yes. And cars are hard to draw. And now, now you got to draw a bunch and dynamic. I, and it's like it's interesting. He chose like all these old school cars. It make it makes me think that like in his like little reference file, he had like one Hot Wheel like old school car or something. Yeah, I don't get it. That is a that is an unusual choice. The storytelling goes this way in this panel, and then this way in that one, which. That gives the edge to Marshall Rogers, man. Yeah, left to right motion, accentuating your speed. Yeah. I think that's a better uh, car uh, interior, you know, reading from the side like that. Again, accentuating the speed, left to right motion. You know, there's no direction on this. Very static. Yeah. Once again, young dude, man. He probably mm -hmm. has 40 pages under his name. Car's getting shot up. They gotta peel out into an alleyway and get the heck out of the car. Nice top down shot here. Definitely selling, entering the uh, alleyway. So it's essentially that right there. Yes. And we're getting low on time. So the guy who's known for his architecture, <laughs> dashing a little bit. That's that seventies era architecture, you know. It's just the uh, like the the square rectangle block buildings. Bauhaus. <laughs> this doesn't like totally a, line up. It doesn't, unless. I wonder if these are out of order, or if this is a two page sequence that is a one page, or if he's doing like three pages out of something Marshall Rogers is doing in two pages. Although here comes the tank. Which seems to be about where we're at there. What's the dialogue looking like? Uh, there's not much Look, time. Here's the last dialogue balloon is the same. So. Yeah, and and it's all it all lines up. But this is like less. There's. I think I think uh, I think maybe McFarland was like uh, going into business for himself, as they say, man. <laughs> That's the phrase. Like we can't be having too many conversations. What, what? He's like, hey, this is boring. Let's get some bullets in here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> These dudes are just talking about it. <laughs> I really hope I turn this page. It's so pedestrian. <laughs> no. Whoa. Explosions are kind of hard to draw. Yeah. I, I give the edge to the veteran on this one. 
because that is a nice big dynamic explosion panel in, in Marshall Rogers' hands. Yeah, and this one doesn't read like McFarlane at all, so I feel like maybe it was just really broken down and the anchor had to do a lot of the lifting on that. Could be, man. That happens. Yeah. And McFarlane, man, why draw one soldier if you could draw a bunch? <laughs> like, like uh, props to him. Get them all in there. I like that that's like the same. You know what I see a lot of, and, and I'm not saying good or bad, there's a lot more low angles in the Marshall Rogers stuff and a lot more of the, maybe it's a lot more high angles in the McFarlane. Mm. There, we've seen a lot of this kind of like the camera's up pretty high Yeah. Uh, in several of his things. And, you know, you put the camera low, it makes the figure more powerful, right? More dramatic. Uh, we've seen it in car chases and with figures now uh, through this issue. So that's something I see a lot of McFarlane in this G.I. Joe is that high angle. Yeah, good call out. Our Joes get caught. Kicked in the face. Stalker gets the boot. <laughs> Swelling up already. Turn to to the um elephant man. I was I was I was uh one of my buddies got kicked in front of me once, man, and his face blew up in two Oof. seconds. But one of our guys got away. In that little sewer. Yeah, so this reads like exactly Man, that's pretty grim. Like that that's that's the guy's bleeding down onto his body's oh, yeah. face. <laughs> that's some dark shit. Yeah, man. So this is just kind of bad drawing right there. Mm -hmm. And you think about these things, it's like these guys are on a clock, man. The egg timer is set. Now you got twenty two pages and you gotta compose the best scenario you can with the time you have available. Certainly Marshall Rogers is a better figure drawer. You know, just those guys standing around, uh, much more believable or, or much more naturalistic figure. Yeah. McFarlane's always been a little rubbery with his figures. I'm comparing the Joes to see, mm -hmm. to see who's who's added and who's left out. I love that Snake Eyes is like front and center. Yeah. <laughs> Best seat in the house. Mm -hmm. He's got to see through he's, those videos. He needs it. Right. <laughs> it's almost a what the, where he's like right up against it trying to peek <laughs> out between them. <laughs> Yeah, man, if you want to kick Snake Eye's ass, just come from the left to right. <laughs> Another high angle. And here's that character, Chuckles, who was introduced in G.I. Joe number 60. You could tell with the floral pattern. <laughs> and he's nowhere to be found here. And, and in fact, I think I don't think we ever see Chuckles again uh, in, uh, in these pages, man. Part of Larry Hama's... Uh dissatisfaction yeah and chuckles was a favorite uh figure of mine just because he looked like a regular dude so this is the last page man not the end because it's to be continued gi joe special mission number six dude so there it is dude one of the one of the very few examples that i can think of in the history of comics where there are two fully produced comics um telling telling the exact same story verbatim yeah, that's fascinating. It's it's such a cool artifact, and as you said, at great call asking kayfabers for any other recommendations like this. I, I bet there's maybe another example or two out there, and I hope there is. Yeah, yeah, I, I'm I'm thrilled to uh, track them down and get them under the microscope, dude. Any parting words before we get out of here? I my biggest takeaway is. You know, a lot of the McFarlane issue looks pretty good to me, and I really think that can be based on time period. Mm -hmm. You know, growing up reading comics in the 90s, I just react to this stuff much differently than, than I think somebody in the 80s would. And, uh, and I wonder how much of that is what we're seeing in terms of differences. Most of the storytelling in the McFarlane issue makes sense, you know, especially being able to compare it. I feel like the storytelling's pretty clear in both of these. So um, I, I do think it must come down to a stylistic thing and that maybe early McFarlane, we weren't all ready for that yet. Right. You, uh, you always, you, you sort of always knew that in order to get your foot in the door, it's so subjective and you just got to catch a guy on the right day and then you get allowed in the door. You know what I'm saying, man? And it's, ar it could be arbitrary in some cases, man. Uh, it's a professional job. It is right. And, and you know, the other piece is Seeing the Marshall Rogers, that looks like what I think of as G.I. Joe comics. Mm -hmm. You know, it's in line with what the norm was at the time. I, it, it's such an interesting what if to me to think of like, what if Larry Hammond went, wow, this is kind of weird. Let's see what happens. Does McFarlane take off? Does G.I. Joe become like, you know, some super popular book? Uh, a lot of what ifs here. 
I'm so glad that this was eventually published and we get to look at it. Yeah, super fun to put these babies under the microscope and, ex and examine them at the molecular level, dude. But we have our own comics to draw, so let's get the, the heck out of here, Jimmy. Uh, K favors, like, follow, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell icon. We'll let you know when the next videos are available, and we are on the race to 15,000 subscribers. Help us get there quick. Be sure to subscribe to the Cartoonist Kayfabe e-newsletter. There's a link below the video to that. And you can find Cartoonist Kayfabe merchandise and t-shirts at links below the video. Jim, give these dudes their margin orders and let's get the heck out of here. Read more comics.